just pick up a little? Action. What we have here is a homemade pyrolysis drum that you can put in your firebox, in your fuel stove or your space heater. It used to be a lolly tin, I think. Um, I punched two holes with a nail on the top and I put a piece of this in there, which is actually a piece of rosewood that's been attacked by a fungus, but it shows the interstices and the small holes that you see in a piece of charcoal, typically in a piece of charcoal. Here's a bit of the same stuff that's been pyrolyzed to show that the fungus has got charcoal in it as well. And I put a piece of this in here that just fitted in the square hole. It was a cube the size of a tin. And that's what's come out. It's a cube of the same pyrolyzed fungus. And that's how much it shrunk in volume, about 60% of the original volume and about 40% of the mass with a good pyrolysis. And also, it, it, you can see the structure inside is a beautiful, it's like a macro photograph of what happens inside charcoal and large biota move into the large holes and small biota into the small holes and you'll see there's a sort of a, a graininess over the entire surface because this has been soaked in, in um, an oven for a, quite a long time probably too long for good biochar but when the, when the right amount of porosity happens inside each cell then you get um, room for biota to move in, a very small biota, right down to bacteria and um, tiny animals and then right up to slugs and um, rotifers, all sorts of larger animals can live in the larger interstices. So what I did in this pyrolysis tin, which is just another lolly tin with an old mm, beans tin stuck over the top, and also mild steel spores off very quickly. This is going, I'm going to get about two or three goes out of this in the head why I recommend stainless steel. So I put a couple of pine cones in there, smaller ones, and now they've turned to carbon and they're quite um, fragile. They're lovely things for kids to play with. Kids get, a, kids get quite interested in all this because the, the, what comes out is an exact replica in the charred lignin that used to be in in the wood. And here I've got a sample of various things that have been charred. This is an old army bag still with its press stud. Here's the part of the army bag with its buckle. Now the point is this was a mouldy army bag and if I'd thrown it into the compost like I was going to, it would all have gone back up into the atmosphere by now. Within two years, seven years, if it's, it's, it's a bit more woody like this, it's all gone back to the atmosphere. But now I've charged this, charred this, I can put it in the ground and it's in the ground for thousands of years and, and almost behind almost everything there is this structure here's a, a rosewood I think something um, from, a, from our forest another pine cone as a bit of cannabis hemp there's a fragment of an egg carton some pine this is an old piece of tree fern very, and now I, I believe that that is an ideal biochar charcoal because it's soft and has a lot of accessible places to live for biota. Here's the bottom of a banana stalk to show you that you imagine how long a, a banana bunch stalk lasts in terms of composting and disappearing back into the uh, atmosphere very fast whereas this now is I could bury that very carefully and dig it up in a thousand years and it would look something very similar to that. Uh, the the mousetrap's been broken all I've got left is the, the trap part. There was a mouse trap in here fully charred. And somewhere in here, I think I'll have to make a whole lot of new samples. Because people go through them so regularly. And there's a, there it is. The remains of a clothes peg. And I do it just to show that there's this carbon structure behind all um, biomass.